Guys, I've made some mistakes when it comes to Legend suspension on the 2021 Road Glide Special. Guys, my name is Rick and this is the HD Vibe channel. In today's video, we're going to explore some mistakes that I made and that others make sometimes when it comes to adding Legend suspension to their Harley Davidson Touring Motorcycle. And hopefully by the end, you will learn from my mistakes and you won't make those as well. And we'll get into it right after this. That's right guys, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know I have had Legend suspension on the rear of the 2021 Rogue Glide Special for some time now. And as you can see, I've got the Rogue Glide Special here on my right. I've got the Street Glide ST on my left, and that's really for some comparison purposes that we're going to do a little bit later in this video. But what I want to do today is cover some things and mistakes that I've read about in forums that I personally have made when it comes to adding Legend suspension onto your Harley Davidson Touring Motorcycle. The first mistake that people often make is these specials come with a stock 12 inch rear shock. Um, so people naturally gravitate and say, well, I'm gonna replace it with a 12 inch rear shock when I get my Legends. Don't make that mistake. Go to a 13 inch rear shock on these specials or any bike like a CVO that might have a 12 inch. And the reason I say that is because the way these need to be set from a preload perspective is you need to set them at a 12 and a half inch sag. That is from the center top bolt to the center bottom bolt on these shocks so that you get the right preload set. So that's an adjustment you need to make on that. And then when you sit on the bike, hopefully that gets you down to 12 inches. So as you can see here, this has a 13 inch Legend shock on it. This has a 13 inch stock Harley Davidson shock. So I'm actually gonna measure um, from the floor to the bottom of the exhaust and show you how these things sit and what the difference is in terms of height because those mufflers, the slip-ons are actually mounted at the same point. So measuring that distance on the low side on both of these should be in theory a 13 inch shock and a 13 inch shock you would think the same. These bikes weigh relatively about the same. So let's take that measurement now. So for comparison purposes again, the Street Glide ST has a stock Harley Davidson 13 inch shock. So I'm going to measure from the floor to the top of the Reinhardt DBX45 mufflers. These are both four and a half inch mufflers, so the same diameter. So I should be equal and equal. And what I have here from the floor to the top of this pipe is about 11 inches. So now I switch on this side to the Road Glide ST. And again, measuring on the low side uh, from the floor to the top again to this four and a half inch exhaust and I'm at about 10 and 5 eighths. So you almost have about a half an inch difference in the way these set, and that's exactly right. So this is sitting at about 12 and a half center to center, and this one's gonna be sitting at 13. So another mistake people sometimes will make is they actually get the wrong load type on the Legend shocks. They come in a standard spring and a heavy duty spring. So Legend gives you some guidelines. If your weight is under a certain limit when loaded, and I'll put that actually down in the description, um, you would go with your standard shock, or if you're gonna be over with your weight plus what you normally would carry on the bike over a certain weight limit, you would go with the heavy duty shock. So if you get the wrong spring for your weight and the riding weight on the bike, you're not gonna get a very good ride. Now I will say, if you compare the ride, once you put the rears on compared to the Harley stock, it is night and day difference, but there is still some things you need to do. Also need to make sure that you install these Legends Revo shocks correctly in terms of what washers and what wide spacers go for what model year, and that's all listed in the instructions. So installation on these is key. And I will actually put a link to the full install video that I did on this bike uh, right up here so that you can go back and reference that. And I'll also have a link to that down in the description if you wanna see step-by-step -step how you do install these. So the next mistake I think that people think is that they're going to get this really plush ride when they go to Legends or maybe even any other shocks in the marketplace. Well, I will tell you, you do absorb 
bumps and expansion joints and go over railroad tracks and you have a much less likely opportunity to actually bottom out once you do put these legend shocks on but they're not going to give you the cadillac type ride they're not going to be floating um, they're really a performance shock versus your harley davidson shock uh, that one if you don't have it adjusted right or even if you do have it adjusted right a lot of times you will actually bottom out but if you're just going down the highway um, and you're not doing twists and turns, you probably will get a pretty decent ride out of that, especially if you have a police seat that has the springs on it. Your base shocks may be okay and you may not have to invest that money and time into putting a Legend shock on your Harley Davidson Touring Motorcycle. Now the other main difference between these two shocks is on the legends you actually can adjust both shocks to get that preload set just right so you do one side then you do the other side you get it set just right obviously as many of us know on these harley davidson bikes the only the left side shock is adjustable and the right side is just kind of there for the ride the other mistake people will make is they get these rear shocks on and they're going down the road and this actually happened to me as well your front end feels a little loose and by loose, I mean maybe in turns, at high speed, at curves. Sometimes when you hit those tar snakes, you'll feel that front end just shimmy a little bit. And that's what I was experiencing, and I really didn't know that I had made a huge mistake. And that huge mistake was I had a really good suspension in the back, and I still had the old school Harley front suspension, which basically is just two springs and a bunch of oil in those forks. Um, so these were doing their job in the back but the front was so inept that it couldn't keep up so what happens is you're getting not an optimal ride because you just have the rears on recently i had the legend axio suspension cartridges put in the front of this bike and i will tell you that wiggle and that looseness completely disappeared this bike now feels like it's riding on rails I actually feel much more confident on the bike, uh, whether it be in straight lines, being going through sweeping curves, tight maneuvers in the parking lot. Uh, the bike just responds much better with that front Axio suspension put in and working in conjunction with the rear Revos that are on this bike. Now I will say, and I've read this in forums, people complain and say, I can't believe I spent all this money on Legend shocks and it rides very rough and very stiff. So the other mistake sometimes people do is they don't actually set the preload on the front correctly either. Um, you have zero through I think three in terms of the preload. And again, Legend gives you a weight range of you plus what gear you're gonna have on the bike, where to set that. So I believe a zero, which is the least firm ride on the front is up to 250 pounds so obviously i weigh way less than 250 pounds and even with my gear i'm not 250 pounds on this bike so mine is actually set at a zero which is the least firm setting now i have heard others that go over that 250 they'll dial it up to a one and they say the bike is really really rough going through bumps and I think that just that jump from a zero preload to a one really, really stiffens up that front end. Because again, this is now a performance suspension system, not a Cadillac ride suspension. I actually had Harley Davidson install them for me. I didn't feel comfortable doing it. I probably could have, and I could have brought a video to you guys. But as you'll see in this picture, um, you really have to tear the bike down in order to get that on there. So guys, I think the biggest mistake that I made and that others make is that you don't change over to an upgraded suspension, whether it be Legends or any others, because it is night and day difference. The technology, the suspension that Harley-Davidson still puts in these bikes, even though like on the Streetlight ST is supposed to be a performance base bike, um, it has 13 inch shocks in the back, but it still has that old technology, the same as in the other bikes. It does have the one inch higher. You are gonna be riding and you're riding your bike a lot. You're gonna be doing a lot of twists, a lot of turns. 
I would highly suggest looking into a suspension. You can start in the back, but as I said, once you change that back, your front is the old technology and you are going to feel some looseness up in the front of that bike. But once you then invest that money both in the back and the front, you get rid of all that and I will tell you this bike is like riding on rails and I will say now this is probably my favorite bike of the three to ride just in general. Um, you know with the stage two upgrade, now with the suspension, I've got the heated grips, I mean the seat, everything, the lighting, the entire setup that I covered in a previous video um, is just perfect for me. And this bike is now, as I said, probably my favorite of the three in terms of just rideability. Sound coming out of the tab performance, exhaust, full exhaust system, 212 header, plus the tab performance with the BAM with the zombie baffles. This bike is incredible. Really, really enjoy it. So guys, if you have any comments or questions about Legend suspension, and as you're kind of thinking through it, feel free to shoot comments or questions at me. I'll reach back out to you and answer as best as I can. So guys, after that, if have you made any mistakes uh, with suspension? Have you experienced the same things I have, whether it be with Legends, um, just upgrading in the back and feeling that looseness in the front? Leave a comment down below and let me know. So guys, if you like this type of content, please give it a thumbs up. Also consider sharing this with your friends so that others might not make these same mistakes that I and others have made when it comes to upgrading to a Legend suspension. Also consider Subscribing to the channel, uh, hit that button right down here. When you do subscribe, leave a comment down below saying I subscribe so I can personally reach out and thank you for supporting the channel. Also, don't forget to hit that bell icon and select all so you do get notified every time I do put out new content. I do have over 200 videos on tips, tricks, rides, reviews, and installs on these Harley Davidson Touring motorcycles. And with that, guys, I want to leave you with this thought. Life is short. Get out and ride the bike. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye now.